Hello friends. I am Clarice. Welcome to the third lecture in lecture series on Katia. In this lecture, we are going to discuss certain checkpoints of a sketch, some toolbars in Sketcher to get us started. The toolbars we shall discuss today are Profile Sketch Tools View and Constraints the computer modeling of mechanical or any other part starts with a sketch. A solid part design may be seen as a result of different features combined together. A sketch can be made only on a planar surface or a plane. Different sketches lead to different result. We may see that while we studying the part design. There are some checkpoints of which you should be totally aware of while you are making a sketch that your sketch should not be self-intersecting and it should be iso-constrained through self-intersection. I mean that the sketch cannot be anything like that you see on your screen. And here are a few sketches which are absolutely fine since the profiles do not intersect with each other and ISO constrained means that the sketch should not move with respect to the vertical and horizontal axes of the sketch. Here is an example of a sketch which is not ISO constrained since it can be moved by mouse clicking and dragging. And here is an example of sketch which is ISO constrained and we cannot move it by mouse clicking and dragging. We can arrest the sketch degree of freedom and make it ISO constrained by making use of different constraints that we will see in a while. You can note these points for your reference. The first toolbar that we are going to discuss is the profile toolbar. The toolbar incorporates some buttons and some sub toolbars in itself. The sub toolbars can be distinguished from the buttons since they have the drop down button on them. The sub toolbar can be dragged out by left clicking on the drop down and dragging it out. And this is true for all the toolbars in KTIA. Let us see some tools. The first button is that of profile. Using this you can make a line. The profile has three point arc and tangent arc as the sub options that are available in the sketch tools toolbar. The line arc or tangent arc can be made by left clicking on the screen or by entering the values in sketch tools toolbar. For all the buttons present in the profile toolbar, the sketch tools has the option of entering the values and shows the sub options when available. Go through all the buttons and have a look over all the options available. When in doubt, have a look at the user prompt information area at the bottom left. We will learn more about these buttons in detail when making sketch in this and other upcoming tutorials. Next toolbar for our discussion is the sketch tools toolbar. In this toolbar we have the first button. Grid which can be used for turning the grid on for visualization. The next button is the snap to point which can be used for snapping the cursor to the grid if required. The next button standard construction element can be used for making the lines and points as standard or construction element. The next button is geometrical constraints. This button is used for implying the constraints on the geometry. For example, if a line while in the making is vertical, the vertical constraint will be applied to it automatically. Likewise if the line while in making is tangent to a circle, the constraint will be applied to it. The saw will happen only when the geometrical constraint is on. Dimensional constraint is used for implying the dimensional constraints. For example when I am making a circle, in the sketch tools I am giving the radius of the circle as an input. That constraint will be applied on the geometry if the dimensional constraint is on. 
it's a good practice to keep the geometrical and dimensional constraints as on. It reduces the amount of work needed towards constraining the sketch. The View Toolbar has the first button which is Fly Mode that let you navigate inside the part which may be difficult to see otherwise. The visualization will be changed to Perspective Mode. The sensitivity can be adjusted using the plus and minus sign that turn up on the toolbar. In Fly Mode you can adjust your viewing direction by Turn Head option, and after that the Fly Mode can be used to navigate. You can also change the navigation speed by using Page Up and Page Down. The view mode that gets changed into perspective can be reset again by following the path. View, Render Style, Parallel. The Fit All In will fit all of the geometry into the screen. Shift with F3 can be used to toggle selection between specification tree and geometry area. And the Fit All In will also work if you want to fit all of the specification tree in the screen. Pan can be used to pan the model and the specification tree. Rotate will rotate the model by clicking and with mouse movements. To change the center of rotation you can middle click on a point. To make it the center of rotation and the zoom in and out center. Zoom in for zooming in and likewise zoom out for zooming out. The normal view in Sketcher can be used to orient the screen perpendicular to sketch plane and align the horizontal and the vertical sketch axis to its position. The Create Multi View can be used to divide the screen in four different areas which you can use for visualizing the different portions of part at the same time. The Quick View has different view buttons which can be used to switch between view. And also the Multi View can be used in conjunction with Quick View. View Mode has different visual styles for visualizing the 3D model. The Hide Show can be used for hiding and showing the geometry in the normal display area. The Swap Visible Space button can be used to hide the elements which you normally see and show the elements which are hidden. In the Constraints toolbar, you will find all the tools for arresting the degrees of freedom of the sketch. It is by using this toolbar, you can turn your sketch ISO constrained. We will proceed by examples. Let us see how we can make rectangle symmetric about the vertical and horizontal axes. Select the edges first that you want to make symmetric using the control button and after that select the line or the axis about which you want to make symmetric. The selection order is important. The edges and the symmetry axes. All the lines are selected while the control button is pressed. After that, we can go for the constraints to find in dialog box to make them symmetric. Likewise a line can be made tangent to a circle. Select the entities you want to make tangent using control button and making them tangent using the constraint to find in dialog box. A circle can be made concentric to another by using the constraint to find in a dialog box. Select the two circles by using the control button and then go for the constraints to find in dialog box. Similarly two points can be coincided. Select the two points using the control button and then applying constraint through the dialog box. The constraint option in constraint creation toolbar can be used to specify diameter of circle or length of line or distance of line from vertical, horizontal, or any other line. A fix together option can be used to fix several parts of sketch together. The fix together constraint, or any other constraint, can be edited by double clicking on it. And any element can be added, removed or replaced from there. Say suppose, I want the tangency constraint, 
that was existing between two circles to be edited and applied between a circle and line. I can double click on the constraint and specify the entity to which I want it to be reconnected to. The Animate Constraint option can be used to animate a single constraint, which in turn can be used to create basic animation. Let us see this by an example. Before practicing this example make sure that the implied geometrical and dimensional constraints are on. I intend to make a line diagram of a single cylinder engine and animate the crank movement which in turn will make the piston turn up and down. I can start out by making outline using the option profile. After that I can make an arc at the origin. I can go inside the endpoints of the line to that of the arc and apply suitable constraint to arrest the degree of freedom of the outline. After that I can make use of rectangle to make the piston so that it coincides with the outline I have already made. And followed by making a line originating from the center of piston and a line from the origin joining to the end of the previous line. In real the length of piston, length of connecting rod does not change. Hence I can apply certain constraints that will arrest all of those values. And finally I can apply the angle of the center line with respect to vertical or horizontal axes. The animate constraint command can be issued and the angle can be animated from 0 to 360 degrees in a loop. The direction of motion and constraint visualization can be set according to need. The edit multi constraint option can be used to edit all the constraints that exist on the screen in one go. Suppose the values with which I made my sketch does not feel right. Using edit multi constraint I can change all the values through one dialog box. Thank you for watching. Do watch this space for more tutorials and lectures.